Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga chapter review of chapter 871, Go Caesar. And wow, just wow. We have a lot of action to get through this time around. The events of Whole Cake Island have reached its climax, it seems, with Luffy actually fighting head on with one of the four emperors. This is pure amazingness. I mean, just thinking of how long it's taken from the very first mention of a Yonko to Luffy coming into a direct conflict with one makes these pages so satisfying in so many ways. Especially as they both exclaim that they will be the one to become Pirate King. And this is a lot more significant than it seems at first glance. Throughout the series, Luffy has mainly fought antagonists that mock him for his dream about becoming Pirate King as if it were some sort of fairy tale fantasy. It's exceptionally rare that he encounters a villain who is also aiming to become the Pirate King. In fact, I can't really think of one off the top of my head, at least one whose dreams weren't entirely crushed like Echo Moria. These simple lines of dialogue are a clear indicator that this series is now in serious business mode. From here on out, this is a fight for the title of Pirate King, rather than a fight to convince someone that you can make your dream a reality. This is reality, and these are the big leagues. However, as expected, Luffy and the rest of the Allied forces never stood a chance. I'm actually a little shocked at just how easily everybody went down. We've got what we thought were some serious powerhouses in the Allied forces, but this fight was over possibly within seconds. Now, I know I've been saying the whole time that they're outclassed, but once again, I never thought it would be this much of a slaughter. In what seems like the blink of an eye, Luffy, Sanji, and the entirety of Jerma have collapsed, and I love that this was the eventual turn of events. Plain and simple, this is the sheer power of one of the four emperors of the sea and their crew. Thinking about how things could have gone, and how some people believe that Big Mom was actually going to be defeated by the protagonist this arc, it honestly would have felt like a cop-out if this conflict had ended any other way than it did this chapter. I mean, if a couple of supernovas, an ex-warlord of the sea, and the Power Rangers were anywhere near enough to seriously challenge an emperor, then they never would have made it to that title in the first place. This chapter puts new perspective on the concept of a Yonko. Maybe not so much for Kaido, because he's more hyped than just about any other character we've ever seen, but characters like Blackbeard, who traditionally haven't been seen as particularly strong. Blackbeard is considered an equal with Big Mom, so no wonder the revolutionaries got wiped on Baltigo. But enough about strength. There were so many other cool moments in this chapter, with one in particular being the final explosion of the Tamatebako box at a rather opportune moment. Just as all hope is lost, it explodes, and it looks like this predicted scenario is going to be our get out of jail free card for Whole Cake Island as we see the castle begin to collapse. I did mention that this was a possibility in the last chapter review, and back then I was leaning more towards Pudding doing something to stop all this, but after having seen the beginning of the sheer chaos caused by the explosion, I am super, super keen to go down this route. But with this, it looks like the arc is ending imminently. Like I said at the beginning of the review, this is the climax. Most valid fighters are down for the count, and an escape pod is ready to be fired, metaphorically. There was even a nice line from Luffy indicating that this storyline was coming to an end when he said to Big Mom that he will beat Kaido and then beat her. This is probably an awesome yet subtle reminder of the larger mission here. The crew went to Whole Cake Island pretty much just to get Sanji back, and finding Big Mom's road poneglyph was a bonus. So let's go ahead and remind the audience that the real conflict will happen with Kaido, and let's transition back into that story track. Although Luffy actually telling Big Mom about his plan to beat Kaido is interesting in its own way. Other than reminding the audience, it's a bit odd to just spit it out here. So now that the Allied forces are pretty much guaranteed to escape, this statement becomes very important because now Big Mom knows where they're going. So if she say, I don't know, wants revenge on the Straw Hats and Beige, all she really needs to do is sail into Kaido's territory to find them. And it could lead to our first real Emperor versus Emperor clash. And while Big Mom definitely can't kill Kaido due to him not being afraid of death, her presence in the Wano arc would soften him up considerably, as well as make the whole Cake Island journey much more worth it in the long run. During this arc, Oda has introduced a lot of characters within the Big Mom Pirates, many of whom are not going to see their full potential realized here, especially characters like Smoothie. I mean, she has the third largest bounty in the series so far that we know about, and we've seen absolutely nothing of her. So perhaps these characters can be expanded upon in the Wano arc in one of the most chaotic clashes of all time. 
In any case, I feel like that's exactly what Kaido would want. But I've seriously derailed here, so let's get back to the chapter. We have a pretty cool revelation that Stussy, Stussy, I don't know how we pronounce it, Queen of the Pleasure Quarter is actually a member of CP0. Now this was completely unexpected. I didn't think that CP0 were going to be big in the story going forward. In fact, I remember wondering if their appearance in Dress Rosa was just to give a little extra something to film gold. But the fact that they have appeared during two major, and for all intents and purposes, back-to-back -back arcs, means that Oda has really been pushing them for some future purpose. What's more, this really builds up the whole concept of CP0 agents. Stussy Stussy, Queen of the Pleasure Quarter, is in a position of incredible power in the underground, so the world government have some pretty influential agents working for them. I'm also really glad that CP0 isn't just made up of former CP9 members. That was my big fear when Luchi, Spandam, and Kaku were reintroduced. So I'm all of a sudden very keen to see more of these guys in the future. Big news Morgans also appears with Stussy, Stussy, uh, I can't keep doing this, with the Queen of the Pleasure Quarter's proper introduction, and she essentially terrifies him into writing an article blaming the whole incident on Dufeld, who she killed. It's a very poignant social commentary we have here, with the world government manipulating the media. It's not so different from the real world. Oh, and in another cool detail that really isn't getting a lot of hype due to everything else happening in this chapter, Judge's helmet came off. Big Mom struck him down, cracking it in half. We didn't get to see his full face reveal in this chapter. However, we are going to know very soon if he has Sanji's eyebrows or not. And well, that about does it for this chapter. Next week, apparently we've got a cover and colour spread to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the One Piece manga, so I'm expecting that to be pretty cool. And for the next chapter, it looks like the castle is going to collapse, and we're going to see the beginning of the escape. So Whole Cake Island, it's been fun, and you certainly haven't outstayed your welcome, but I am ready to move on to another journey. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favourite, or subscribe. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.